Welcome to this week's episode of Go Guided. I'm your host, James Cody, with the Maine Professional Guides Association. And on this week's episode, we're going to be talking with Mike McClellan of North Maine Woods, the organization that manages recreational access to millions of acres in Northern Maine. Stay tuned for an exciting episode as we talk about how North Maine Woods interacts with visitors and guides alike. It's sure to be an interesting episode. Stay tuned. The Maine Professional Guides Association is Maine's leading voice for full and part-time professional guides. Established in 1978, the Maine Professional Guides Association is proud to be the largest, oldest organization of guides in Maine. Our members provide great recreational opportunities everywhere from the remotest parts of the state to the most populated. From sea kayaking to fly fishing or even bear hunting, we have something for everyone. We are proud to honor the legacy and tradition of professional guiding in Maine and we serve our members in a variety of different areas. From the State House in Augusta to working with the Maine Departments of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife, Economic Development, and leaders in Maine's tourism industry. MPGA works every day to advocate on behalf of our members. Additionally, members receive benefits such as weekly e-newsletters with the latest news impacting Maine guides, invitations to special meetings and invites to our annual banquet, and access to a pro plan with member discounts to business partners such as L.L. Bean, Cabela's, Burris Scopes, Orvis, and Old Town Canoe, and much more. As the association grows, we want you to be part of it. Don't wait and join today by visiting www.mainguides.org for more details. Go Guided is also grateful to have the support of the Maine Guides Education Fund, with generous support from LLB. The Maine Guides Education Fund's mission is to educate and advocate regarding outdoor recreation, public access, land conservation, land use policy, fish and wildlife management, and the sustainable use of our natural resources. We participate with other Maine outdoor partners to ensure the future of Maine's outdoor recreation and outdoor heritage, including hunting, fishing, camping, canoeing, and snowmobiling. Support the Maine Guides Education Fund by visiting www.mainguidseducationfund.org and we thank you for your support. Welcome back to Go Guided. I'm your host, James Cody, with the Maine Professional Guides Association. And we're really excited today to have Mike McClellan of North Maine Woods here with us. Uh, especially as we're entering fall and a lot of hunting seasons and some fall fishing. A lot of people are going to be out in the woods. Uh, Mike is with North Maine Woods and it's a pretty unique organization here in Maine that manages a tremendous amount of recreational access uh, for the public to use. Um, and so Mike, first of all, thank you very much for being on with us. We really appreciate you taking a little time. Thank you, James. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. A anytime we can share information with, with people about North Maine Woods, we're, we're all about it. Well, and th that brings me to my first question, which I think a lot of the viewers who are going to watch this are probably familiar with North Maine Woods, but there's a lot of people out in Maine's public that maybe have never experienced what North Maine Woods is, or they just think of it as, you know, the big North Woods. North Maine Woods is actually an organization, right? That that manages recreational access. You want to talk a little bit about what you guys do and, and where you're located? Uh, yes, you're, you're absolutely right, James. We manage the public access to three and a half million acres of primarily uh, private forest land. There is some um, main public reserve land in there as well, about 5%, but the most of that land base is privately owned. I'll give you just a, just a little bit of the uh, history of North Main Woods briefly, uh, just so people can kind of get an understanding of why the uh, organization was formed. Uh, it was formed back in 1971. That was probably a few years before you were born, James. Uh, it was actually just a few. Year I was born, so I, I'm quite familiar with it, I think. Um, but uh, it was actually a concept that private landowners had come up with. And if you go back in the history of, say, the early 70s, it'll kind of help explain why they felt it was necessary to help form the organization. But of course, in the early 70s, you were looking at um, there was the, the, clean, the Clean Water Act uh, was passed shortly, uh, I think in maybe 1972. You might want to fact check me on that. But uh, and, and this was also the time when the log, the log drive days were coming to an end. Sure. But in, in, 
opposite of that, though, was the creation of uh, a lot of road networks. In fact, the Golden Road, which a lot of people have probably heard of, was uh, built in 1970. So the landowners knew that the log drive days were certainly coming to an, to an end. And then, of course, the mechanization of machinery and uh, log trucks and, and those, those sorts. Uh, basically, they started creating these road systems uh, to get you know, wood from mills to, you know, uh, to where they had to go. And as a result of these, this road creation, you, you basically uh, had recreational traffic showing up as well. And it was, it was in 1971 when the landowners decided that, well, maybe it's best for us to have one entity managing that recreational traffic. Because prior to that, you would actually go through a series of locked gates. You would have to literally write a letter to say, we'll use the, the Great Northern name, for example. Many people are probably familiar with that. And you'd have to write a letter requesting a key to a locked gate. So after the formation of North Main Woods, those locked gates disappeared. And now uh, in 1986, with the uh, addition of the, what we call the West Branch region, we now have three and a half million acres that we manage. And we manage that through a series of, of checkpoints. We have 14 checkpoints. Uh, seven of those are automated checkpoints. And visitors can access the area by uh, you know, uh, passing through one of our checkpoints. Gotcha. And, th and that, so for, for the public to, that may not be familiar with it to sort of uh, understand what it looks like. I mean, there's literally, and I've been through many, many of them. Uh, I don't think I've been through all the gates, but literally checkpoints with a gate across and they pay a fee based on, is it number of days or number of passengers or both that they're going to be inside the, the gates? It's a person fee. Uh, we actually serve about 70,000 visitors each year, which is, which is quite a, quite a few, but uh, I want to just emphasize that North Main Woods is nonprofit, and what we mean by that is we don't have any shareholders. All the money that is brought in uh, helps keep the organization functioning and going. I'll give you an example. Someone comes in, uh, they can pay what's called a day use fee to come in and, and utilize the area for the day, and those day use fees help keep our checkpoints in operation. And then we have camping fees in addition to that. And those camping fees are used to actually help uh, maintain our uh, maintenance programs for the campsites. We've got about 350 authorized campsites that we maintain. So, uh, of course, you can imagine 350 campsites spread out across three and a half million acres. Uh, it, it definitely takes some manpower to keep those maintained. Uh, so that's pretty much what I was referring to as far as North Main Woods being nonprofit is the, the money that is generated. Uh, goes back into keeping the organization going and keeping uh, basically these private lands open for the general public. It, absolutely. And I think, you know, we shouldn't underestimate uh, how much value I think that North Maine Woods and its landowner members bring to the people of Maine. I mean, whether you're, I know bird watchers that have been up in that country, canoe uh, enthusiasts that have done various pieces of the Allagash, um, you guys host a number of uh, other hunting and fishing opportunities. It's just a tremendous resource. And, you know, for the average person that hasn't experienced it, I think it's hard to envision what three and a half million acres looks like and feels like. Um, so certainly for any of our viewers out there, if you haven't been there, certainly encourage you to do it. It's a, it's a resource like no other. Um, and uh, Mike, I just think it's, it's important, I think, also for many of our members at the Guides Association to understand the relationship that North Main Woods and the Guides Association have. I mean, we've been close partners for a long time. I, I, North Main Woods has supported the industry, and, and we've tried to support private landowners on the back end. But that's also been a, a pretty uh, cool success story in terms of how we operate in tandem in many cases. Absolutely, James. And I, I'd just like to say North Main Woods, we, we certainly... Uh... Uh, cherish the relationship that we do have with the Maine Guides Association. You guys have been very supportive of landowners uh, on certain issues, and that's been reciprocated. and And uh, we 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 don't take that relationship lightly. We we really do uh, we really do respect it. Absolutely. Well, uh, uh, same goes for us, uh, certainly. And a couple of other questions come to mind. I, you know, if if um, somebody from let's say. Saco or Augusta, you know, anywhere in the state, they haven't, they're sitting here watching this episode. 
and they've never been to North Main Woods, what, what are a few things that they might consider before making the venture north and, and pro proceeding through a gate? Are there some things that they might want to have in mind? Uh, yeah. Um, the, the, we figure three and a half million acres, a person could certainly come out and wander and get lost. So planning, I would emphasize planning. Uh, there are no, no grocery stores, no gas stations or anything like that located within this region. So people have to plan for that and plan accordingly. And honestly, I, I think a person would be better off if they've never visited North Main Woods before. Uh, and they plan on a, whether it's canoeing, a hunting or a fishing trip is you can eliminate a lot of that stress in the planning process that you would experience by hiring a main guide. And I, I certainly would uh, encourage anybody that's never visited the North Main Woods before that would like to basically have the ultimate experience. Uh, I, I think hiring a main guide is definitely the way to go. These guys, this is their playground. This is their backyard. They know the, they know the region well. They know the road systems well. You know, they know the animals well. So it, it really makes sense that uh, it's going to add a, 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 a it's going to take you to the next level of your recreational experience if you hired a main guide for sure. Well, wow, that's that's such a I think critical point for anybody that's heading up in that direction is certainly understand that the infrastructure up there is very limited in terms of you know no gas stations, no convenience stores inside those gates. I mean there are uh, some commercial enterprises that operate inside the gates, some sporting camps and things like that. But this is not an area where you're going to go in and fill up your gas tank and you know, buy your milk and coffee and, and supplies for the week or the weekend. Uh, you've got to plan ahead for all of that. Those are things that professional guides that operate up there are familiar with, obviously, and, and deal with on a daily basis. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, North Main Woods, we have a really close relationship with the, the, the guides that utilize the region, uh, you know, because there is, there is a process for someone to want to come to North Main Woods and, and utilize it on a commercial level for, for guiding. You know, there are a few requirements. Uh, I could go into those real briefly. Uh, I, 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 yeah, I was just going to say, I mean, one of the things that we're trying to do on the Go Guided program is talk to both members of the public and guides themselves. So, you know, in terms of a guide looking to maybe create some opportunity up in North Main Woods, what are some of the things that they should be thinking about? Uh, well, it, the, the process is relatively simple and it's fairly straightforward. We require anybody that does guide within the North Main Woods to have what's called a commercial use permit. And that permit can be you know, uh, applied through our office here in Ashland. Um, it basically just a, a phone call away and we can get that permit out to them. So basically they fill this permit out, return it. Uh, there is a fee of $125 for the permit. Uh, in addition to the permit, a, a guide would be required to carry liability insurance. And of course, as, as it states in its name, it does address any liability concern that a landowner may have or, 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 even, a, or even a client or customer of the guide. Uh, in addition to that, uh, any first time applicants, we would just need a uh, copy of their main guide's license, make sure they're in good standings with, uh, you know, with the law, with IFNW. We certainly, uh, you know, we cherish our relationship with uh, IFNW as well. So we don't want people coming into the North Main Woods thinking that it's, you know, the, the wild, wild west or anything like that. Certainly. Um, but yeah, those are, so those are kind of the three things that a person would need uh, to, you know, to apply for a commercial use permit. And the best thing to do to start that process is just give us a, you know, give our office a call here and ask for Mike or Laura, and we can certainly uh, help them with that. And you've, you've got a pretty diverse mix of guides up in that region, if, if I recall correctly. I mean, everything from moose to bear to birds to, I know some guys are still doing deer hunting up in that neck of the woods. Um, yeah canoeing i would assume some snowmobiling so it, it's a pretty good mix it is uh we I, I'll, I'll 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 say it like this we have about 20 outfitting businesses or guide businesses located within the nmw region in addition to that we have about 90 businesses that utilize the region so it's it's a high percentage of guides are coming into the region to use it uh for for commercial reasons uh, and, and, you know, in addition to, to that, we have in total about 110 applicants each year. And it is, like you said, it's, it's a wide range of different uses that, that they're applying for. A lot, a lot of it is uh, certainly canoeing, uh, the guiding. Of course, right now with the adaptive moose hunt coming up, we get a lot of new applicants applying for that. 
And uh, matter of fact, I think we're our uh, applicant use compared to last year is up about 10%, I think due to the fact that we have a lot of, a lot of uh, guys that have booked moose hunts for the adaptive moose hunt. And, you know, we, we uh, certainly have a very good relationship with our bear hunters. We have a lot of people that utilize the NMW region for bear hunting. We have approximately about 2,700 bear bait sites that we manage. And uh, in addition to areas inside North Main Woods, uh, outside, we also manage for Huber, Seven Islands, Prentice and Carlisle, Bass Keegan, uh, Down, East, Down East Lakes Land Trust, and Woody Wheaton Land Trust. So the bear hunting is pretty important to us as well. It's about 20% of our operating budget. So we, uh, we, certainly, uh, we certainly put a, a, some strong time and effort into making that uh, program run as smooth as possible. Uh, but yeah, by all means, the, the, the guiding industry is basically, we have a saying around here at North Main Woods that when the guides are doing well, North Main Woods is doing well. So we, you know, there's, we really want to emphasize that, uh, that these guys bring thousands of visitors into North Main Woods each year. So, uh, we, we certainly, like I said, we, we certainly cherish that relationship that we have with the guides. Well, and I think, you know, that relationship is, is important. I think, obviously not only for the health of North Main Woods as an organization, but um, hopefully what, what professional guides are doing is helping people to experience that three and a half million acres in a really responsible, safe way in, in hopes that we can keep that land accessible for many future generations to come. Um, you, you know, I, I would think, and, and this is a question maybe that the landowners probably um, have some appreciation for people that are out there guiding people through these experiences um, in, a, in a way that's safe and responsible, respectful of the landscape, respectful of the machinery and the people that are doing work there. Because first and foremost, that three and a half million acres is working timberland. Uh, and, and I think people really need to keep that in mind. Yes, and uh, thank you for bringing that point up, James, because that's a very good one that, the, you know, it is a working forest. And uh, first and foremost, you know, is the moving of wood products to, you know, to market. And, uh, you know, that is the, the main concern of landowners. Uh, but they also put a lot of uh, faith and trust in North Main Woods to help manage that public, you know, public recreation aspect of it. So uh, it's really, it's, it's, a, it's a formula that works really well. And uh, we're, we're fortunate, We've, uh, if anybody did the math earlier, we, we were founded in 1971. Well, this is our 50th anniversary this year. So we've been around for 50 years. So evidently we're doing something right. It, it, it's it's pretty cool. I think you know five decades of uh, this type of success and people being able to balance the enjoyment of these landscapes with the working forest. Obviously, it's a tremendous model and one that's really worked quite well. You you touched on the uh, the uh, adaptive moose hunt, the special adaptive moose hunts that are occurring. I think it's in Wildlife Management District Number Four. Um, and probably my guess is we're gonna have a lot of viewers that are either hearing about that moose hunt or going to experience it themselves. What are you guys thinking in terms of anticipating what's happening on the ground out there? I mean, it sounds like there's going to be a fairly significant number of people coming into the wildlife management district and you guys will obviously have to host a lot of that. We will, James. And you know, we, we were kind of, uh... Uh, we were a little retroactive uh, in our approach. We knew that there was going to be a large influx of people. We already knew the number of permits was going to be about 500 permits. So we look at that as 500 additional parties that were going to you know, enter the North Main Woods specifically for Zone 4. Uh, so we made preparations. We went out and we set aside 50 areas that are suitable for overnight camping. And we marked all these areas with signage. In fact, I've got a sign right here. You can see that. It, it, these, so these 50 sites are going to be marked with these signs. And as you can see on the sign, they're not, we're not going to allow outside fires. But, you know, we are going to let people stay there, park their camper and stay the night. Uh, you know, but we're, we're emphasizing to people that it is for, you know, hunting season only. And we had to do this to, I guess, adjust for that influx of, of extra hunters that we were going to get. You know, in addition to the, uh, we call it the adaptive moose hunt sites. In addition to those, we have, we have fire permit sites, but unfortunately there's just not a lot over in that zone four for fire permit sites, which is why we went through this process of, of uh, putting in the, this additional 50 sites. And this, this 50 sites, uh, mind you, is, is all within those two, uh, 
those two regions of zone four that are participating in that adaptive moose hunt. So it is going to give uh, people some opportunities to find a place to, to park their camper. Uh, there's also, as you probably are aware, there's going to be check stations at the Caribou checkpoint on the, uh, on the Golden Road, the 20 mile checkpoint on the Northern Road heading to, to Rockwood. Uh, and then uh, there's going to be a checkpoint, I believe, at Clayton, Clayton Lake. At the okay. Village. Yeah. So people, I, and I, I, I guess there, there's obviously been a, a lot of preparation, especially on the department's part of, of all this. So I think a lot of these people that are coming to this zone, they're, they're not going to be blindsided. They, they've had to go through a regimen of, you know, you know, uh, information. I believe they had to take some online courses. They had to really, uh, be well pr prepared and, and, and planned for, for this type of a hunt. So we're, we're really excited about it. We think it's gonna, we, we think it's gonna go well. We, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out, you know, the first year, but from what I understand, this is going to be a five year ongoing, uh, hunt. So. Uh, it, it's uh, it, it's going to be interesting to say the least, and and it's going to be uh, right around the time of bird season starting up. So we expect certainly a lot of a lot of traffic over that way. Yeah, absolutely. I was uh, I was fortunate enough to experience at least a portion of that hunt, uh, which was a little bit different last year. You know, it was sort of an initial, much smaller hunt. There wasn't this number of app uh, permittees up in that region, and uh, it, it's a pretty unique experience. Um, just a nice time of year to be out, beautiful landscapes in that wildlife management district, uh, which for folks that might be trying to figure out where that is, it's sort of uh, northwest of Moosehead, I guess, is the best way to, well, it, even, even some to the east, I guess, but um, it just, just beautiful country. And, you know, we, we frequented North Main Woods uh, uh, checkpoints on a regular basis, simple to get in, in and out, uh, but I would say People want to prepare for a lot of traffic at those checkpoints on any given morning or evening. It, it certainly got busy even last year. Yes, ab absolutely, James. In fact, we do have a, uh, a, a it's a, uh, a self permit that they can fill out and they can actually take those with them home and fill them out that night and bring them with them the next day. And then that, that, that permit's already filled out kind of in, in advance and, they, and it kind of expedites the process of people getting in. Um, I did want to just mention real quick that uh, you know, there, there are, there are fees, uh, day, you know, day use fees for people coming in as well as, uh, camping fees, but we, we suggest people buying passes. If they plan on using the NMW region for more than seven days, uh, they're much better off buying a pass after that seventh day, basically it's free. So we, we kind of encourage people to, to kind of take a look at how many days they think they'll be in the North Main Woods region. And, uh, they can certainly find some savings in purchasing a pass if they plan on being there for, you know, eight days or more. I think that's a great point that a lot of people should be aware of that, you know, if you get up into that country and you begin to enjoy it and you know you're going to spend a lot of time there, look into those seasonal passes. I know I've got a lot of friends that, that do that and spend a lot of time up there. And honestly, I mean, you can't, for, for the money, you can't have a much better experience anywhere in the state of Maine than heading up into that country and enjoying all the woods and water. So, I mean, it's well, well worth the money. The people are great. The country is great. So I would definitely advise people to go and and enjoy it. Absolutely, James. It's uh, it, it's quite unique. We have a lot of people that call us, especially from uh, other states, and you know their their comment to us is, "Wow, do you guys really realize what you have up there?" And you know, I I think I'm pretty sure we do know what we have up here. Uh, <laughs> sometimes we may take it for granted, but you know, a lot of people just see the North Main Woods as just uh, you know a three and a half million acre you know, area that they can go and, and recreate. There's, you know, there's a uh, few limitations. I mean, as long as people are obeying the law. Uh, one thing I do want to emphasize though, when people do come to visit, uh, to remember that it is a working forest and that by all means give logging trucks the right of way. Uh, the, 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 you know, there's a lot of uh, logging truck activity, a lot of, uh, you know, harvesting going on. So people need to be cognizant of that and, and just, just be, uh, be smart and be, you know, be careful when they're out there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we've got just a couple of minutes left, and I just thought it might be worth uh, touching on two quick points. Um, one is, I know that there are some limitations in terms of what people can use for motorized recreation up in, up in the North Main Woods region. No ATVs allowed, uh, I, th I think is still the rule, correct? Correct. Yeah. Um, uh, and, yes, and thank then, you for bringing that up, James. Yeah. Uh, 
especially this time of year with, with moose season uh, approaching, we have a lot of people requesting to bring tractors or Argos or ATVs or anything of, you know, of that sort. And, you know, unfortunately that that's just not allowed, in, you know, in the working forest. Um, but, you know, we, we uh, certainly don't mind somebody, you know, showing up in their, their Ford F-150 and, and they got it packed and ready to go. I mean, those are the, those are the people we want to see and someone that's, you know, well-prepared and, and hopefully somebody with a, with a guide in tow is really going to, you know, up their game. So we, we want to see that too, for sure. Um, and Mike, if, if people are out there looking for more information, you guys have a website, you're on Facebook. Uh, do you have, uh, the website is what, northmainwoods.org? Northmainwoods.org, yes. Yep, and if anybody's interested in calling our office and inquiring about a commercial use permit, uh, area code 207-435-6213. Awesome. Awesome. And you can see there's some maps out behind Mike. And I know if you go on the website, w there's maps available on the website as well with a tremendous amount of information. So uh, whether you're a guide or somebody just looking to go up and enjoy Maine's really great North Maine woods, hope you check out North Maine woods, get more information, be well prepared uh, and go guided if you can. So Mike, thanks again for joining us. Oh, uh, thank, Thanks for having us. We appreciate it, James. And we will see you next time on Go Guided.